time for What's Hot. It is when we talk about the story that has everybody talking. We are joined today by Susie Falk of the Falk Group Public Relations, and Jeff Wagner is back. A 29-year-old woman who has terminal cancer, terminal brain cancer, has chosen to end her life November 1st. Brittany Maynard was diagnosed with brain cancer in January. She qualified for the Death with Dignity Act to receive medication that will end her life peacefully. Should people be able to die on their own terms. She actually had to move to Oregon. Mm -hmm. um, she was living in San Francisco. It does not honor that act. The right. state of California does not. So she and her entire family, including her husband, moved. And uh, she has the pills and she this plans is the to plans. do this. And the reason why she's doing November 1st is because her husband's birthday is October 26th. And she wanted to be able to share that moment with her husband. But this is just such a sad story. It, it, it is. It, it is sad. And I know whenever I talk about this, I, I get I get all sorts of feedback from people who disagree with me, and that's fine. But th this is a conscious decision that this young woman is making. It's a horrible story. She has been diagnosed with a about the worst form of brain cancer that you can have. Medical science says, despite all the things that they've done, um, she's, she's not going to live more than a couple more months. Mm -hmm. And those last couple months are going to be debilitating. They are going to be horrific. And so she's making this conscious choice, and I think she should have the right to make that choice. And, you know, good for her for doing such uh, incredible thing with the last few months of her life. I mean, she's shedding awareness on this very important topic, which right now five states allow you legally to end your life when you choose um, with, you know, doctor's supervision. And she had to spend a lot of money and jump through a lot of hoops to, to move her family to Oregon where it is legal because California wouldn't allow her to do this. And what she's suggesting is that this should be sort of a nationwide standard. People should be allowed to, to end their lives if they're in some sort of a hideous, you know, final few months with their doctor weighing in on it. And I agree with her and I think that she should be heard. And I know there are a lot of people that disagree with that, but I, I think that, you know what, it, it's better than her alternative, which is a pretty nasty ending. That's well, not well, and, and see, but I have a question, sport. though. I have a question, though. She, you said it. She spent a lot of time and she spent a lot of money. Everyone doesn't have access in the United States to the advantage that she has to which make this Which is one of the things opinion, she brings up. Which is, is why she's talking she about up. that. That's but right. even if everyone in the U.S. was allowed to do this, could they afford to do this? Because this is not just like take an Advil and bye bye. Right, and see, and nobody's forcing this decision on anybody else. I mean, I, I, I hope to never be in a situation like this, and I don't know how I would respond. And I understand the way people look at this depends a lot on their individual religious mm -hmm. beliefs or, or whatever. Nobody is forcing this on anybody. But in this particular situation, and look, I'm somebody who believes in miracles, and I guess you could always say, okay, maybe there's going to be a miracle. Mm -hmm. At the same time, given her particular diagnosis, mm -hmm. I, I think you know and she knows, and she's come to grips with what that sure. outcome is, it's not mm -hmm. right for for everybody but no that's right and, and, and you know what there's a hybrid here and it's called palliative care and there's a lot of really wonderful doctors and Freighter's doing a marvelous job out there with palliative care and ensuring that the last few months are, are high quality you're meeting your goals and they're not too painful and you're you're comfortable so there, there is the option of palliative mm -hmm. care so yeah I, you know personally I think it's an interesting choice and one that suits yes. her. I mean, she, she's already suffered seizures. She's lost mm -hmm. her, the ability to speak right. for, for a day or so. So I think that she's, um, she wants to go on her terms, and I think mm -hmm. that's up to her. And her family supports it. So I just feel for her husband and her mother. Absolutely. Yeah, her, her mom is pretty heartbroken. Yeah. All right. Well, coming up next, we're revealing the viewer's choice topic of the day. And Brian got her back with another look. Look at that. And our viewer's choice topic of the day. Again, we're joined by Susie Falk and Jeff Wagner from 620 WTMJ. Well, today's viewers' choice topic, the country's top airports for international travelers are making changes as the Ebola crisis continues. Chicago's O'Hare is among those putting in new screening procedures, training custom officials with questioning travelers about their health and even taking their temperatures. Will this help to make sure that there's no outbreak here in the U.S. is the question. <laughs> I don't see how it can. You know, I mean, I, who hasn't heard the Ebola story? It can take up to 21 days for symptoms to present themselves. So people can slip through the airports and go home and go to parties and then get sick. So I, I think that this is just probably a chance for the country to calm down the fears of Americans and say it's still okay and safe to travel. But I don't see how this would prevent a, prevent well, an outbreak. Well, well, right, exactly what you're talking about, because it's 21-day period, but even more so, what happens when the person lies? 
What happens when the person, I mean, I, I can understand that. You have somebody, for example, who's in one of these uh, tiny African countries that gets exposed to this. You know, do you want to stay there mm -hmm. or do you want to come to the United States and hope you can get some treatment? So what happens when the person knowingly and intentionally lies because they want to get in? There's really no way you can verify this. I mean, if, if we want to be serious about <laughs> this, we need to start either looking at quarantines or doing some things that some of the European countries which are, do, are doing, which is just suspending incoming flights mm -hmm. for the time being. Now, the president doesn't want to do that, but, okay, unless you do that, you're not going to be able to guarantee that this thing does not spread in this country. Mm -hmm. I think that the, the only people it will stop is if someone has a temperature. Right. They're going to have to find, you know, the one or two people that already have the symptoms. Right. They take their temperature. They're coming from it's flu certain season. parts of Africa. Well, right? This but is a disaster waiting to no, happen. You're going to have but all if, these people with cold but and if flus traveled, that are... But <laughs> if you've traveled from Africa, you know, and they can trace that, okay, it's one person, but... Sure. Would you it's want? It's not the fix, but it, it, I think it's making people feel better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah well, that, that's that, that's Susie great. Doesn't Everybody feel feels about this. like they're safe, even if they're not. Wonderful. <laughs> All right, time for our lightning round. If you drink Red Bull, you may be able to claim ten dollars or fifteen dollars worth of products. The energy drink agreed to a thirteen million dollar lawsuit over claims the drink gives you wings. <laughs> This is why people hate lawyers. Here, here's yeah. the deal. The lawyers in this class action case are getting $4.75 million. <laughs> the, the pot of money that was sent asi set aside for claimants is $13 million, which means if millions and millions of people say, hey, I bought a Red Bull sometime in the last 10 years, my guess is at the end of the day, the people are going to get maybe five or 10 cents. The lawyers are going to get 4.3 quarter million. Having said that, I don't, I'm sorry, I've never had a Red Bull, but I don't expect that I'm going to sprout wings if I had one. But you're a lawyer, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we like you, Jeff. Um, you know, it's sprouting rings, wings, yeah, ridiculous. Um, you know, there's, there's some falseness in the advertising. We all know that. It, to sprout wings, who really thinks that happens? Um, I think the irony in all this is that you can either get your 10 bucks or you can get more Red Bull. So let's punish Red Bull and go out and drink some more Red Bull. So. Hey, well, I need money to go out for lunch. to bring this lawsuit, though? They're I was smart. expecting wings. I didn't get any wings. <laughs> well, it, it's actually, it is a little more $10. complicated. They're, they're saying they thought this was a great energy drink. But, but, here's the, but again, here, here's the bottom line of this. You're, she, you're exactly right, Susie. The, the, the person, assuming for the sake of argument you're victimized, you're going to get almost nothing out of this because that $13 million is going to be gone in an instant. You're going to be looking at a nickel or a dime. The lawyers make all the dough. Go you can take 10 this bucks true, and go Jeff. get two coffees at Starbucks. That's right, $10. I'm going to get Sprout some mine. wings over there. That'll make you feel like you have wings. <laughs> two coffees. Right. <laughs> Get your $10, everyone. Well, we can continue this discussion, but we'll have to continue it online. You can find that page at tmj4.com slash hot. Download the Game Day Extra app. For